Hi. Forgot to put on lip color. Looking a bit pasty. Oh yeah, April Fool's Day. It's officially Matt season. His birthday is in six days. I love a lip stain. Ooh, don't get me started. Do you like this? Missing nails? Missing fake nails? Cute. Okay. Hello. Hi. I'm gonna give you some updates. Obviously the video is not out. Um, we not only have had continued technical problems, a lot of it, now that we've kind of like gotten to the bottom of the computer issues, a lot of it is Adobe and possibly our graphics card, Matt's graphics card. Um, Happy birthday, Vivid Wolf. I hope you have a beautiful birthday. That's for you. I loved the Easter clip. He does hate Easter. Um, okay. So that's, that's where we're at with the computer stuff. And then I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you a story about Booker. Um, because that also significantly delayed us. Um, Booker! Booker! Um, okay, so here's what happened. I made a big mistake. That's- you're not a booker! You're not a booker! You're not a booker! You just- we see boo boo do. Do you want to lay in there? You can go to that bed if you want. That's nice. You want to shake my hand? Oh my god, you're cute. Okay, anyways. I made a big stupid idiot mistake. Okay. I... I don't know how to set up this story so that it's... Um, a tale, you know? Anyways. A while ago. I had read something about how people have dental problems because um, they don't chew gum with xylitol in it. Xylitol is really good for your teeth, apparently, according to this thing. It's probably not. It probably is bullshit, okay? I was at a neighborhood Marshalls, and I saw a big bag of gum at the checkout, and I said... Yeah, let me get that. It's got xylitol in it. Let me get it. Um, knowing that xylitol is toxic to dogs, okay? I knew it, and I thought to myself, make sure that this is out of dog reach. Be good about it, okay? If you know Booker, you know that he is a menace, and he eats things, okay? He found my full bag I had two pieces there were 55 pieces in there uh, he found my full bag I af after the stream on Friday I went to the pharmacy it's 20 minutes there 20 minutes back quick trip when I came back the bag of gum was in the living room completely shredded no gum anywhere to be found and I panicked I freaked out because I knew I didn't, I didn't know how much he needed to consume in order for it to be a problem. Um, but I knew that it was toxic to dogs. Um, and I didn't know which of the dogs had eaten it because I wasn't, I wasn't there. And sometimes they'll get in on something together. Who knows? So I raced, I raced them to the emergency vet. I ran in and I... I didn't call or anything. I just I just ran. And I ran in and it was busy. 
And I just kind of yelled, my dogs ate a bunch of xylitol. And then the, the farm, the receptionist was just like, okay. And got on the phone and was just like, text to front. We have a code blue, code blue, text to front. And all of a sudden all these people burst in the door, took the dogs, asked me if I knew how much or the bag or anything. Um, you know, cut in front of everyone at the emergency vet because this is a serious situation. It turns out that 0.11 grams of xylitol per kilogram of body weight is toxic. And Booker is about 55 pounds, 50, 55 pounds. He ate approximately 55 grams of xylitol, which is like triple the poisonous amount for dogs. Um, So they took him back. They gave both dogs a uh, nausea inducing injection and they both barfed so much um I wasn't there obviously um Daphne didn't eat any (laughs) poor thing um and uh yeah Booker ate all of it Uh, They confirmed that he threw up a bunch of gum and it was minty and they just let, they just kept, kept him puking until it was just bile coming up. Sorry, puke. Um, And then they, they gave them the injection to reverse the nausea and then they returned me Daphne and Daphne and I waited around and... They were like, we're going to check his blood sugar. We're going to do this because the problem... I know I felt so bad for Daphne. I was like, I'm so sorry. You didn't do anything wrong. Um, They were like... The problem with xylitol poisoning is that it is a like insulin inhibitor. So for dogs... Because xylitol is an artificial sweetener. Um, basically what happens is it prevents them from absorbing like sugar i guess and so their blood sugar will plummet um and their liver will fail it will cause liver failure um so yeah i mean i'm i'm glad that i'm telling this in case anybody has dogs psa get rid of anything with xylitol in your house sometimes peanut butter even has xylitol in it uh check your gum check your candies if your dog is a menace like mine gummies uh anything like that just check and get get it the heck out of your house uh we don't have pet insurance so no it didn't cover anything um we probably should just get some pet insurance just for booker because he is a freaking menace that man has been in the um emergency room more times than i can count um so they were checking his blood sugar a lot and the problem is that the liver failure is kind of like a later onset thing so he had to stay overnight um and every two hours they were checking his blood sugar by doing little like ear prick blood tests um poor man i don't know if he slept at all while he was there um but daphne and i waited around um and then they were like, okay, we're going to give you the estimate and you can sign it and that sort of thing and this and that, blah, 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 blah. And then they were like, I was kind of ready to go. And they were like, we're going to keep him here. At least for 48 hours, they said. Um, and I had to sign all the stuff that was like, yes, please try to save his life if he, you know, <laughs> like, please resuscitate him. You have my permission to spend all the money in the world to save his life if you need to. Like, there, it was so strange. They had options that were like, do not resuscitate. Spend up to $500 attempting to resuscitate. Like, spend anything exceeding, like, whatever, $1,500 to resuscitate. So I had to be like, I was just like, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out, you know. Um, yeah, checking every two hours. I mean, it's $400 an hour for them to stay 
in the vet. So, um, plus all the other stuff. Anyways, they called me back in for some reason. I was kind of ready to go. And they called, they were like, actually, they want to talk to you again. And I was like, okay. Uh, I was certain that he had just died. I was just like, all right, why are they bringing me back in? They brought me back into the little room, had Daphne with me. The lady came in, the tech, and she was like, here's a little bottle of water if you need it. Oh my God, your glasses are so cute. She was being so nice to me. And I was like, I know my dog is dead and you're just trying to be nice to me and you feel bad for me. Um, And she's like, I'm going to close the door for privacy, but let me know if you need anything or if your dog wants water or anything. I was just like, why are you being nice to me? I know my dog is dead. Stop. Um, Anyways, waiting there, crying, of course. Um, And then eventually the vet comes in and they're like, he's doing fine. (laughs) He, we just want to make sure that you know that, uh, that freaking you know he's gonna be whatever we're we're monitoring his thing i don't even remember it was like it was like the same information i had already received and i was just like okay dope cool they scared the shit out of me and i was like texting matt i'm like they're bringing me back in i'm scared oh my god what if something's wrong i i for sure thought they were gonna be like he had a seizure we're doing our best you know oh my god i was so scared um but yeah he's he had to stay there until I was able to pick him up yesterday he had to stay there until Sunday um his stuff was normal honestly if we I will just say if if I hadn't seen what had happened within the hour and immediately taken them to the vet and had them vomit if I didn't know about xylitol poisoning I mean how many times I can't even count on my hands how many times Booker has just eaten a whole bag of something and we've just been like, oh, Booker, you know, oh, this guy, you know, Matt didn't know about xylitol. So if, if I hadn't come home and he had just gone out, he'd be like, oh, Booker got into something again. Um, he 100% would have died. 100%. his liver would have failed (laughs) and he would have died (laughs) so i'm very thankful that he's okay but it's a really serious problem and it's been so scary we were so scared the whole time um i'm a hero but also it's my fault so like i'm the one that brought the poison into the house and i knew so i just have to be more vigilant um I guess I just didn't think that he would have any interest in gum. But why, why wouldn't, why wouldn't he? Of course he does. He's a menace. Um, dogs are whack, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's where we're at. He's okay right now. I have to take him back again today to get another blood test to just triple make sure that, because 72 hours is the period of time where you have to like monitor the liver um theoretically he could still have liver failure i don't think he did her does but um we're gonna go check again today he's gonna be so mad when i take him back there apparently um because they were doing little like prick ear prick blood tests on him every two hours uh he got sick of it and he tried to bite somebody (laughs) and I felt really bad, but, um, you know, I get it. I understand. And they were all very understanding. Um, they were like, we get it. I wouldn't like it either. So we switched to another part. We switched to his tail instead, instead of his ear, you know, he got sick of the ear. So I figured I would take him there today. I should take him back to get another blood test. He's going to be so mad. He's going to think that I'm leaving him there again. And then I thought maybe I would take him to Petco after and we would get him a special treat or something. I don't know. Um, Or I might just bring him home, but who knows? It's anyway, that's what's been going on. It's been super stressful. Um, 
the all the time that he's been away from us, you know, we've just been like at any point really he could just take a turn for the worse and uh his liver could fail, his blood sugar could plummet. Something like that. So, PSA. Check the stuff that you bring into your house for xylitol. It's incredibly toxic. Super do it's like rat poison for dogs. Um and then always uh if if your dog gets into something and you're unsure just take him to the vet just go because it's not worth it can you mention the 400 dollars an hour thing you're paying 400 dollars times 48 hours out of pocket uh no something's wrong with that math i don't know it was only like 2000 it was two, on under $3000 I don't know. Something happened. The The bill that they showed me was like, it's $400 an hour, or $400 per... So I don't know, something. I don't know. I could have sworn it was $400 an hour. I mean, they gave me the thing. I guess I could look at it, but... I mean, still, not nice to spend that, but... You know, it's not the first time that we've spent $3,000 on Booker because he ate something he shouldn't have. I think that is what it is. I think the $400 thing is for the two-hour checks. Um, and then... Yeah, eventually they stopped checking. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, cause they had him on a dextro strip for a while, a diluted dextro strip for like the first night. Um, dextrose is like a, basically sugar, but it, um, yeah, it, it's just to like keep his blood sugar up because like I've been saying the risk with xylitol for dogs is that their blood sugar will drop and they'll get hypo, hype hypoglycemia um so that's what they were doing and the next morning they called me and told me that they were going to take him off of the dextro strip because his readings were good um they were going to wean him off of it and see how his blood sugar did that sort of thing so yeah that's that. Oh yeah, my my old dog, my dog I grew up with used to get the camel hump. Uh, and my cat too used to get the camel hump of fluids, fluid injections. Um, she's. I mean, it's it's not so. Daphne's had a couple. Uh, Daphne had one visit to the emergency vet. Um. Yeah. Check, do a do a sweep of your house for xylitol, especially if you have a dog that is a menace like mine. Um I don't think Daphne would eat it. Uh, honestly, she's not like that interested in she's not a like vacuum like Booker is. She'll eat many things that picky dogs won't. She's not picky is what I'm saying, but she's um she, I don't think that she would be interested. I don't think she was even interested in it. And I knew that something was wrong the second I came home because Daphne didn't come greet me when I came in the door. Um, she just, she was, she felt guilty because Booker had gotten into something and she was hiding. So, you know. Um, so yeah, that was our weekend. Um, we we're super glad that he's safe. When he got home, he was really excited. <clears throat> he was really excited to be home. Had lots of sillies. Went outside, took a huge poo. Um, and then slept the rest of the day and night. Hard. Slept hard. I don't know if he slept at all. At all when he was there, you know. So it's noisy. I did bring him um, Friday night after... A, you know, I had come home for a little bit and just, like, been with Matt and kind of un unwound a little bit. 
with Daphne too because she Daphne was really upset that Booker wasn't there she was having a hard time um after I unwound a little bit they said that I could bring him a bed and a blankie so I went back brought him a bed and a blankie kitty cubby thank you for subscribing um it was interesting to see Daphne like that I mean he's gone to the emergency vet before but I think because she went also and she knew she probably saw him vomiting and she was vomiting and she knew that like she got to come back with me but he didn't she was really different without him she was very quiet like I mean if you've been on our streams before you've heard Daphne making sounds even when they wrestle out in the living room or something Daphne's like ah 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 and I was like trying to play with Daphne and stuff and she was just completely silent. She was playing with me, but she just wasn't making any sound. I think she barked once while Booker was away. Um, she just, she was like glued to my side. She was such a little baby. Um, she just like didn't know what to do with herself and then she was so excited when he came home. Um, yeah. So that's that we were all worried sick it's very hard to get anything done plus computer problems so we're gonna try to get the video up tomorrow um it's we're in the like uh yeah still computer problems i think i mean matt is really trying to get to the bottom of it but we believe that something is wrong with his graphics card um it looks like the graphics card is like too big for the slot and it's like it's like this <laughs> a little bit and so like maybe the pins in there are bent or something and it's just like adobe doesn't know is is like not rendering things as it should be and you know yeah this is the same 3090 uh and I said, you know what, just buy a new one. Just buy a new one, who cares? And he wants to wait for like when the new new ones come out. So, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a time. GPU sag. He did prop it up. Um, and it like got worse. <laughs> I don't know. Um, how am I feeling now? Feeling tired, but good. I'm glad that Booker is home. I don't want to take him back to the vet, but I'm going to. I want to make sure that his liver is good. And um, I don't know. That's it, really. That's pretty much it. So yeah, now what? I'm a little just like in a daze. I'm a little tired today. I do have some coffee here. I think there are like things that they make to prop up the GPU, the, the graphics card. They come with a thing. Like those things you put under your doorknob. Oh yeah, disassociating for sure. For sure. I'm saying bye and I go butterfly in the sky. I don't have them though. I, I, I used up all my funny videos in the last stream. I don't have enough funny ones. I did update Supermarket Simulator. I don't know. Um, I don't know if there's a new update. I updated it. So, you know, if you recommend checking out 
So he used GPU market and reselling his used one when he moves on from a temporary one. It didn't prop it up before it started sagging. There's like no reasonable fix. Yeah. Yeah. Just wash the bell pepper child. Okay. Where is it? It was quiet. <laughs> uh, I muted it. That is what I needed. Oh. It was under the cam. We need you to stop scritching or yiffing or whatever. That's all I have. <laughs> I walked by a La Labo store yesterday and started telling my partner about all the info I learned from you about fragrances and perfumes. Did you go in? How was it? <gasps> there he is! Just what I needed. Gilliam? Gilliam? Gilbert. There was an episode of CSI. I keep telling Matt I think I'm ready for another CSI watch through and he keeps going, no, please. And I say, I'll do it alone. I won't do it with you. But there was an episode of CSI and it was called What's Eating Gilbert Grissom. <laughs> and I remember it. I thought it was funny. Roller coaster? Hmm. Did you cry? Like if you cried. <laughs> He's sad. He's sad. Okay. Yes, that's the original music. And to be honest, the original clip is significantly longer and I edited it for brevity. Okay. To tell you the truth. Yes. It's longer. And also, it's not the only time he goes on a roller coaster. This man loves roller coasters. just saying he loves roller coasters I wonder if I can just search Gil Grissom roller coaster is there a video there is it's a minute and a half <laughs> oh my god let's watch it Let's watch it. Huh? I need to fit this to the freaking thing. Oh, yeah. Are you for real ready? This is it. This is. Oops. Oops. Oh, move. And there's no dog here, so you can go night night. Ready? There you go. There it is. Yeah, it's in Vegas. The show takes place in Vegas. So. Yeah, I did edit it for brevity. To be honest, I was going to just put the whole thing on. But I, I, um, I showed, I started showing it to Matt. And he was like, you have to cut this down. It is so boring. 
And I said, fine. And then I did it, and he said, more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, also YMCA'd. Mm -hmm. Also, also that. Yep. But he's a certified Gilgrissom hater. No, he's not. He's a certified CSI hater. He's a certified sericidal hater. I saw a ladder on the side of the house. No one knows what I'm talking about. This is just for me. Hmm. At the moment, Matt's been playing Bellatro. No, no, that was the that was the full episode version. I've been playing nothing. I've been playing getting distracted by 50 different projects at once. Palatro. He doesn't have a crime drama of choice. I guess if he had to choose. I think he doesn't like Law and Order SVU because he doesn't like all the rape, which is fair. <laughs> That's fair. But I love Benson and Stabler. And, and Ice-T. I'm gonna sneeze, I think. I've been watching um, a show. <laughs> it makes me feel like sometimes the shows that I like make me feel like a 50-year-old conservative man. Like, I like Dirty Jobs and... Um, How It's Made is my favorite show of all time. Don't talk to me. And, you know, stuff like that. And lately I've been really enjoying... Um, I just feel like I watch shows sometimes that, like, old men like. Um, not Duck Dynasty. No, I don't like that. I love Golden Girls. And um, r lately I've been watching a show called Contraband which is a reality show where they are at the borders, <laughs> the, the, the Texas-Mexico border, and they're intercepting cartel contraband. Okay. I love it. I am so fascinated. I know. I have a, I, I'm a, I'm... I am multifaceted really it does remind me of papers please i was thinking that they were like let me see your documents and then you know what i thought and i went i meant to tell you about papers please because i was so annoyed i was like the height and the weight pff, who cares that's so stupid who cares they did it he said the height and the weight don't match here this is a fake thing and i was like Oh, especially how it's made. This I know. This I know. How it's made, I have thought, I have said to Matt, if you don't have some kind of neurological difference, if you're not neurospicy, you are not allowed to watch how it's made. It's not for you. Okay? It's for us. I'm gatekeeping. It's just for us. That was my joke. That's one of those things where I say something. I'm like, I feel like this would be a funny tweet. And then I just, I just say it to Matt instead. <laughs> you know? Remember the canned beef video and the dryer on crotch ad you saw? Oh, yeah. We did a how it's made excursion, didn't we? 
I saw that one on how it's made the the curling rocks, and it 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 actually it's funny that you mention it. It sent me on a like Wikipedia dive of curling, and I find it so strange. It wasn't a sex doll. It was a regular doll. <laughs> It was a big doll, foam lady, big foam lady, mannequin. It wasn't a sex doll, it was a big foam lady. Pull up the clip, pull up a chum. Someone will find it. It wasn't used for sex, it was for, it was for, um, store displaying. Remember back when everyone wanted to know what you and Matt looked like and your face reveal was a huge event? Yeah. Back when, back when people cared about us, back when we could make videos in a timely fashion, before, before the bad times, just kidding, everything is good. Aw, the drama, I love that, so fun. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's, it's less so like a how well our videos do thing and more like a how well we do thing <laughs> and like just internet drama stuff just wears on you. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. There's the clip. See, it's not, it's not a sex doll. It's a foam lady. And I saw it on How It's Made and I said, I got to show people this. <laughs> no, I don't need a GoFundMe for vet stuff. That would make me feel bad taking people's money. Oh, yeah. And the ad. <laughs> Ooh. Fun. That's my motto. That's, 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 if I were to write a memoir, Memoirs of a Shelby, it would be called, I needed to discuss it, I needed people to see it. <laughs> I need to show you this, is what my memoir would be called. Please, I need to talk about this. Have I seen the My Strange Addiction episode where the guy has sex with his car? Of course I have. Of course I have his car Chase, which he doesn't have anymore. He has new cars. They did a Where Are They Now recently. He has different cars. Of course. Of course. That's another show I love. My Strange Addiction. 600 Pound Life. Hoarders. Intervention. I love 90 Day Fiance. Not as much lately, though. They, I'm bored of it. I love Love is Blind. I love reality television. Oh no, the lady who married the Eiffel Tower got divorced. No. I love Shark Tank. I love Kitchen Nightmares. It's fucking raw. I love, you know what I love? Bizarre Foods with Andrew Zimmern. I love that shit. Love it. Mm hmm. I don't watch The Bachelor. No, I, I maybe should. But it's not, um, I don't know, maybe maybe I'll give it a whirl finally. I mean, I've given it whirls before and it just felt so, like, normal. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. Wow, okay, we love Joey's season. Okay, Joey. Wow. Uh, the only the only bachelor season that has appealed to me in recent time is the golden bachelor i thought hmm. interesting you know i thought all right 
I love that for them. I'm trying to move my setup around here a little. Bachelor episodes are too long. Okay, work. I love that. Why do you feel depressed after watching The Bachelor? It's nice time. Oh, man. Is Milf Manor the one where they brought all their sons? I think that was too... It was too much. <laughs> I did not like that. I watched it for a little bit. And then I just started to feel... No. It made me feel bad also. Okay, I'll tell you. I will explain it. Milf Manor is a dating reality show in which they put 10 milfs and 10 young hot guys into a ring and then they have to date each other but the twist is it's all their sons and they have to watch their sons and these sons have to watch their moms that's trauma that's trauma. That's trauma. Oh, I did used to watch Beauty and the Geek. I remember that show. But my main thing back in the day was Flavor of Love. I love New York. Um, Rock of Love. Mm -hmm. I have always loved that stuff. Flavor of Love is so good. And I will tell you why. I will tell you why. Okay? It's Flavor Flav. <laughs> it's Flavor Flav. It's funny as hell. It's so funny. There's nothing to be taken seriously. There's nobody's... I'm not worried about any of these people, you know? Because it, it's all just a big, fat joke. You know what I mean? I like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My dad did a side job on Delicious's aunt's house and we got a picture with her. <laughs> you got a picture with Delicious? Uh, too bad they didn't work out. My favorite, I have such, I have such, ugh. Man, there are so many quotable moments from Flavor of Love. One of my favorites, I'm going to act it out. I'm going to act it out, is when he says to her, he says to her, Toasty. This is season two. Toasty. We're at elimination. And he goes, some, there's rumors that Toasty does pornography. Okay. There's rumors that Toasty does pornography. And Flav is up there at elimination, giving out his chains, his clocks to everyone. He, and he says, you know what time it is, you know? And then uh, it comes down to like Toasty and some other lady or something. I'm going to make this extra cam go away. Toasty and some other lady. He goes, Toasty, are you doing porn? Are you doing stuff? And she's like, no. No. And then he goes, That looks like porn to me, baby girl. <laughs> I love it. And he pulls out a picture of her. And she's like, ooh. I don't think it was porn. I think it was just a sexual photo. I love that. But my favorite is, um, my favorite is when in one of the little talking heads, he goes, it kind of bothered me. <laughs> but then again, it ain't bother me. Ha <laughs> ha. But it did kind of bother me, though. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> That's my best one. That's my best one. Yeah, boy. Bucky was bucking. And she was trucking. Something related to reality TV that could be really fun for you and Matt to watch is The Tester. PlayStation Sony hosts a competition reality show trying to be like Survivor, I think, where the winner gets an internship with Santa Monica Studios. It's from early 2010s. Oh my gosh, how cool. Okay, that sounds fun. 
I will ask Matt if he wants to watch that with me. I do like Survivor also, but I haven't watched it in a long time because I like it less now. Because at a certain point, after a certain point, you know, the um, there's a way to play the game, Survivor, and everyone has figured it out. And it's no longer like just actually being good at it and stuff. It's like, it, it's all making uh what's it called the brain is braining today you know i want to say camaraderie but it's not that someone's gonna know the word <laughs> alliances that's it yeah <laughs> it's all just like alliances and voting out the best people and then by the end of it everybody's shitty and <laughs> you know You keep around the good people for a little while to, like, help you win things, win challenges, and then towards the end, you get rid of the good people, and then it's just shitty idiots. <laughs> That's how you win Survivor now. So I don't enjoy watching that. I enjoy watching, like, the older seasons. And that theme song. You like the mole? I haven't watched it. Bum 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 bum. That's Shark Tank. I like to watch Shark Tank and I like to sit there and I like to go. I like to go like this. Hmm. This is a pen for my for me writing my deals out. I like to go, hmm. A royalty deal? I don't know, Mr. Wonderful. That's pushing it. I'm saying don't take the royalty deal. Don't do it. Make the deal with Lori. That's what I'm saying. And for those reasons, I'm out. Bye, bingo bongo. Ooh, I'm glad you're enjoying Near Automata. Yep. I mean, scrub daddy. I would never take a deal with Mr. Wonderful just because I don't want to talk to him, <laughs> you know? I would only take a deal. I don't want to take a deal with Barbara either, honestly. I don't really care for her that much. It's got to be for me. It's got to be Lori. I don't really care for Damon either. He seems mean. I don't want to make a deal with Damon. I feel like he's going to be mean to me and I don't want it. Right? He's such a he's such a he's such a stinker. Such a stick in the mud, but he does he did do bombas. He did do bombas. The bells? They're for ringing. I love Robert. I love Lori, and I love um Mark Cuban. I like Mark Cuban. I like I like Robert I think the best just in general because he always gets so excited when someone brings a dog and I like that and he's always down to clown you know they're like who wants to try it out and he's like me and he gets up there and I like that about him mm -hmm. I, I yeah I, I agree crisis I agree right? He's, he's nice. He seems like a nice guy. So my, my ideal sharks, Lori, Mark, Robert, the rest of them kiss my butt. Lori is calculating and bloodthirsty, but she's a pleasant human to communicate with. And she makes the best deals. You know, I'm sorry to say, Squatty potty. Didn't she do squatty potty or was that a Barbara thing? I have a squatty potty. I have a scrub daddy. Is this a good stream? <laughs> 
There's lots of xylitol free gum. But you know what? I would like to come up with a pitch to Congress that they should frickin' put a warning. On the gum. <laughs> Ugly. <laughs> uh. No, no, I'm fine. He was home all day yesterday and I cuddled him so much and he's freaking sleeping. He's freaking sleeping, that boy. So he's good. He's fine. Um, that's okay. You missed my big rant at the beginning. Uh, xylitol is incredibly toxic to dogs, so get it out of your house if you have a dog. Okay. Okay, good. I'm glad that you guys are liking this quiet uh, brain fart stream. Quiet brain fart stream. Yeah, Booker almost died. Booker would have died if we had not intercepted, is the long story short. It's an artificial sweetener. My favorite ice cream flavor? Honestly, if we're, I'm, I mean, I could be like, yeah, I like going to salt and straw and getting the freaking crazy wacky caramel caramel barmel schmarmel flavor whatever like obviously those are better but if we're just talking basic ice cream flavors honestly pistachio i don't super care for the actual nuts in the ice cream but i love pistachio flavored ice cream and things Jibber Jim Bomb, thank you for subscribing to Tell Us Muckers Uncrustable. I like cookie dough. Was it good, Livy Ray? Good. I love coffee flavored ice cream too. Honestly, like I don't need stuff in the ice cream. I just need the flavor to be good. You know? That's why I like caramel, or not car coffee. Cuz it's just uh, I do like but you know what I really like Ben and Jerry's toffee heath bar crunch. Yeah, Ben and Jerry's does have a lot of stuff in it. And you know what? My hot take about Ben and Jerry's, the core ones are not it. You know where they have the goo in the middle? No. I love toffee. Um... I do like Cherry Garcia a lot, and I will say, Ben and Jerry's, the chocolate that they do put in, because here's the thing, and Matt feels this way very strongly about ice cream. Chocolate in, like, little chocolate bits in the ice cream, and they're all cold and crunchy. No. You know what I mean? But I will say, the Ben and Jerry's ones... When you do let them melt in your mouth a little bit, delicious. The Cherry Garcia ones. Delicious. You know what I mean? I like half-baked fine. I just, I don't, I don't, I mean, half-baked I like, but it's a little bit too chocolatey. So I wouldn't like go pick it. I wouldn't go pick it, but I'm not going to kick it out of bed, you know? 
If I'm going to pick an ice cream from Ben and Jerry's, it's going to be Toffee Heath Bar Crunch. And also, you know what I really like too? It's a Hagen dazs It's Hagen dazs and it's um, white chocolate raspberry something. And it's very delicious. I never had a gelato I didn't like. I've never had ice cream I didn't like. If it's sugary, I'm gonna enjoy it. You know? We used to get gelato. Um, there was a... I don't know if it's still there. Maybe it is. Um, there was a little gelato store on Tahunga. If you're in LA, maybe you know what I'm talking about. By Aroma Cafe. I love Aroma Cafe. Absolutely, you must go there and have some breakfast or brunch if you're visiting LA. And then you uh, you go walk around on Tahunga. There was a gelato place there that was really delicious. Oh yeah, I saw that everything bagel. Jenny's. Right? Jenny's ice cream is pretty good, but I did not have the everything bagel. Somebody made a ranch one too, I think. Really? Bingo bongo. I would try it. I'll try anything. I'll try anything once, food wise. Really? We went to Molly Moon's when we were in Seattle for PAX. I would try durian. I just don't have it right now. I like a froyo. And you know what? I used to really like all the toppings and stuff on a froyo. Not into it anymore, really. The toppings. I would try century egg for sure. The only thing that I would really struggle with, I think, is balut. Um, you know what I like, though? Pink berry. Just plain. Plain pink berry. Tart. Plain pink berry. Mm. That's good stuff. Menchies used to be a really big deal for me when I was a child. One opened up by my house that I grew up in. Oh my god, I had a dream about the house that I grew up in last night. Weird. Ever had, like, vegan ice cream? Probably. Just don't remember. Yeah, with the big old tree that they took out. Is it good? I used to have an ice cream machine in my house growing up. We made ice cream like one time. Mm. I don't really have a go-to fake meat brand, but actually I do. But it's not meat as much as it is just like chicken tendies. Is that, is that okay? I have to find it. I have to goog it. Let me goog it, okay? Sorry, one second. Um, v 
vegan. Maybe it's vegetarian. Vegetarian chicken tenders. Mm, Gardein. Gardein. G A R D E I N. I like those chicken tenders. They're pretty good and they're crunchy. Those are the ones that I like. Yep. I'll have to try it. I have watched Great British Bake Off, but not in a long time. What's your go-to place if you're doing Uber Eats or Postmates? I don't want to say. <laughs> Lately, it's Del Taco. <laughs> I like Del Taco a lot. It's really good. People give it a bad, a bad, hard time. Listen, I love Taco Bell too, but I will say that They're very different. Taco Bell is not for when you want Mexican food. Okay? Taco Bell is not is when you want Taco Bell. Del Taco is for when you want, like, tacos. Do you know what I'm saying? Taco Bell is its own thing. It's its own category. But Del Taco... Yeah, I live in LA, but I don't... I don't want to wait that long. <laughs> and... Del Taco comes with fries, and I like the French fries. Okay? Taco Bell is for when you want Taco Bell, and you're correct. It is this, It is a variation on the same base flavor, everything at Taco Bell, and I love it. I love Taco Bell. I love it. But there's more options at Del Taco. The crinkle cut fries are really good. And I will say it, I am a girl who loves a crispy fish taco. And the ones at Del Taco slap. Okay? And they give you the lime and everything. Hello? Okay. Oh. Don't get me started on Rubio's. We used to have one near us. Matt loves Rubio's. It's gone now. It was a COVID tragedy. COVID casualty. And he is so sad that Rubio's is gone. But they, you know what they do at Rubio's? They put the tortilla for the taco. And they put cheese on it and they crispy the cheese on the taco tortilla. And then they put the taco stuff in the crispy cheese tortilla. And it's very good. Mm. Matt also really likes Ike's. I've got to say, I'm not that into Ike's. I'm not super into Ike's. It's also one of those places where like everything has a certain flavor. And I don't really care for the Dutch crunch bread. It's too sweet. I guess. I guess it's still around. It's just not in that location. I don't know. I'm unsure. It doesn't hurt my mouth. It hurts my feelings. I don't really care for the texture of the bread. There's so Sometimes it's very dry. And then it's sweet. So I just prefer sourdough or like a French roll. Ike's is the place with the lollipops, correct. They always give you a, one of them caramel apple lollipops. You know what I'm saying? And I do like those, but also those hurt my mouth. Because they're a little bit too big and then they're sharp. And you have to work them down a little bit to make them not sharp. And then they get sharp again. You know what I mean? 
They get sharp again in the middle of eating them. No, we haven't watched any Shogun. Matt said he wants to wait until it all comes out. <laughs> yeah, mouth knives. If Xylitol was in Kingdom Hearts, what Heartless would they be? I gotta be honest with you, I don't even know what you're asking me. I don't remember what Heartless... It's You're saying, I don't know. <laughs> but Xylitol does sound like a Kingdom Hearts character. I don't remember enough to be able to answer that question. <laughs> All I remember is the, the the variety of strange names that I heard sometimes. He's nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Xemnas, Xylitol, Xehanor, Xenitas, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. Venmo, Ventus, Verb, Adjective, Diatribe, Dialysis, Dilated Pupil, Dark Souls. <laughs> I do like El Pollo Loco. El Pollo Loco. That's the song that they sing in the commercial. A man goes, El Pollo Loco. I used to go there all the time as a child because it was near my school. Free association. Was that fun? Give me a word. Any word. And I will tell you how the root of this word is Greek. Dilated pour of whiner. Pour. P-O-R-E, not P-O-O-R. Very different. Dilated pour whiner. <laughs> Dilated pour of whiner. Lemons. Combing my hair. Ow! It hurts. I'm still learning sign language. What is this? Are you proud of me? I had Matt quiz me the other day and he said, wow, you're good. But I, I, I don't, I can't have a conversation, really. I can't. that's okay you can dictate chat that's all right you're allowed i don't know all the swear words and i can't speed run the alphabet i can i can i can light jog the alphabet i can it ready here we go a b c d e f G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X. What did I do for R? I think I fucked it up. Because R is this and I don't remember doing it. Q R S T U V W X Y and Z. How do you get better at interior decorating? My house just has stuff in it, but it's not coordinated at all. Ooh, that's a good question. Well, if you're genuinely interested, I would subscribe to some subreddits. Decor, interior design, 
And then here's the thing about design, de interior decorating. You got to make it what you like, okay? So what I would do, what I would do if I were you, is look around your house, look around your room, whatever room you want to focus on, and find the thing in there that makes you go, yes, I love this thing. Ooh, that chair is so me. Ooh, this vase. Hell yeah. I love the colors. I love the shape, whatever. And then you can like say, ooh, you know what? This color might look nice with this color or whatever. Or, okay, I want to make the room focus around this chair. So I'm going to make the chair what you see when you walk in the room. And you know what? What's nice next to a chair? A lamp for reading. Maybe a little side table. Maybe a little bookshelf. I don't know. And then you just like can build around the thing that you like. You know? That's where I would start. And also, um, if you want to, you can go on to like Pinterest. And you can type into Pinterest color palettes. Ooh, also go to um, like male living spaces or like cozy places subreddits. Finished your first knitted hat, by the way. Turns out I was just illiterate in knitting. Oh, no, what happened? What happened? I'm proud of you, though. Good job. Proud of you for finishing. Yes, our Helldivers 2 um, is coming out soon. I could, oh, I'm sorry. You couldn't understand the pattern. If you have questions, you can ask me on stream happy to answer knitting questions and then it just clicked and that's what happens i love that for you i like male living spaces because they're um i like to see men taking pride in the design of their homes because <laughs> it's sort it's sort of like a thing that you just expect oh yeah women care about whatever Oh yeah, obviously women have good taste in fucking whatever. Women and gay men, that's the, you know, the general consensus, I think. But I like to see dudes showing up on Reddit and being like, here's my mid-century modern chair and my freaking thing. It's just, it, and it's so good and it's so simple and like, oh, I like it. It's nice. It's nice. It's good stuff. Mm-hmm. I like to see dudes coming together and talking about interior design, okay? That's positive masculinity. That's what that is. See, look at Gengi, Pride and Joy, his record listening space. And then look at Simos, his, he has a bar stool as his nightstand. Does that spark joy? Do you walk into that room with the bar stool as the nightstand and go, <sighs> that's the goal, I think, in a room. So you walk in and you go, I'm inspired to do the thing that this room is made for. You know? You walk into your office and you go, okay. Yeah. Ready to get to work. You walk into your bedroom and you go, oh, yes. You walk into your kitchen and you go, all right. A doodly doo doo, you know. Cobalt, don't touch my stream category. I'm just kidding, you can. <clears throat> you love your bedroom, feels like a small cave. Look at cozy places. Cozy. What is it on Reddit? Cozy. I saw someone's butthole on Reddit today and I didn't like it. It was someone from 90 Day Fiance and I didn't like it. And I did it to myself. Okay. Cozy places. Cozy places. Look at this. Late evenings on our veranda. That is a cozy place. You can't see. There's too much reflection. That's a cozy place. 
My new sewing room. Cute as hell. That is a cozy place. Love it. Love that for you. No, there's no bee holes on cozy places. There's bee holes on the 90 day subreddit, apparently, but in the comments. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Cozy. Cozy. Also, I will say a little design tip that my mom, uh, my mom is an interior designer and a feng shui consultant. Certified feng shui consultant. My white mother. <laughs> There she is. Expert in feng shui. <laughs> um, I mean, she is. She's very good at it. Um, a rule of thumb with like design stuff, setting things out, things that you like. There's a rule. She says there's the rule of threes and fives. And I, I when I moved this bell, I broke the rule. So I'll put it back. If I were making a display for my bells, if I had a bookshelf and I were making a little bell display, I would either do three bells, and that's a nice little, ooh, a nice little feature, or I would do five bells. Maybe even like that. And then they look nice together. You put the tall in the back, the short up front. And now they look nice. That's a great question. How does my mom keep all of that in her head but can't figure out the internet? Great question. Ooh, yeah, lighting. Lighting is a big deal. Honestly, lighting can make a room. That's a good point, bingo bongo. Get yourself a cheap little sunset light. Get yourself some warm lights. That'll make a difference. I hate having to put on my overhead light, but... Otherwise, the camera looks bad with it. Overhead lights. Hate. And I don't know how Matt does it. The man is an axolotl. The man is a, a cave-dwelling, eyeless uh, nematode. You know what I mean? The man... And he, he goes, I asked him the other day, you know, sometimes a question pops in my mind that I never, I've never asked because it's just like, why would you ask that? Of course. But um, the, the question pops in my mind and then I ask Matt and he's like, why are you asking me that? Obviously it goes without saying. I said to him, do you like my plants? <laughs> I said, do you like all my plants that I have? You know, so he's never really mentioned them, but I have a lot of plants and I'm constantly propagating my like monstera and my pothos and stuff. And I have um, a windowsill full. I have a potato in a jar of water and it's sprouting roots. And he did ask me, he said, why do we have this gross potato here? I said, do you like my plants? And he said, yeah, I like them. I want plants. Can I have plants in my office? And I said, no. You cannot have plants in your office because you will kill them because you never open the curtains. The printer is making sounds. Thank you for subscribing. And he said, there's got to be a plant that doesn't need light. And I said, no. Mm -mm. Sorry. They all need it. You can get a grow light, obviously, but he doesn't want any light sometimes. I thought maybe I could get him some, like, hanging air plants or something. Mushrooms. <laughs> mushrooms. Uh, he hates mushrooms. Doesn't like to eat them. Doesn't like to look at them. Moss. 
Maybe I'll get him a Marimo Moss ball. I got him a birthday present though. It's a good one if I do say so myself, but it's not a Moss ball. Um, I don't know. He wants that. And then the other day I asked him, it was yesterday. I asked him, do you think I'm an interesting person? <laughs> Sometimes you just, uh, I don't know. You gotta, you gotta check. Do you think I'm an interesting person? He said, yeah, I think you're interesting. <laughs> like, yeah, I would say so. I have asked him if he would still like me if I was a worm and he said no. He said he did not. He would not like me if I was a worm. And I said, but what if I got turned into a worm and you already knew me? I don't remember what he said. Probably, probably wasn't very enthusiastic. I think he was thinking, would he, um, would he want to date me if he met me and I was a worm? Is I think what he thought. And obviously, of course, of course, you wouldn't date me if I was a worm in the beginning. Sometimes you just have to, you just have to check. You gotta check in. Cause I think I'm interesting. <laughs> I like all of the stuff that I know in my head and I think I like to talk about things that I'm interested in, but I wanted to make sure. I don't think that he would want me anywhere near him if I was a mushroom. If I got turned into a mushroom, maybe he would take care of me. I think he would take care of me. If I turned into Tom York, I think he would marry me again. If I turned into a plant, he probably wouldn't open the curtains. He would just leave me in the living room. I opened the curtains. I was going, I was vacuuming in there. And like, I learned about, I, I went down a, a German culture rabbit hole the other day of people just talking about living in Germany and German people. And they have a word, I lost, I forgot it already. They have a word for um, every day or something or every week you open up the doors and windows no matter what the temperature is, to get fresh air in the house. And I'm so into that. I so, I have to do it. I open the back door all, Luften, yes, Luften. I open the back door all the time with the screen and Matt hates it. Matt hates it. And so I sometimes will Luften in his office when he's not there. <laughs> and then, um, and then he, he, like, I'll forget and I'll leave the curtain open, but I'll, whatever and then and then next time i see him he's like i don't like that <laughs> like i'm sorry i meant to close the curtain so you would never know that i luftens okay <laughs> you would never know it was supposed to be unbeknownst to you the luften was supposed to occur before you arrived yeah ud luftning is what you call it in denmark I mean, we don't do it in the States in a way that it, like, has a name, I think. But it'll be like, oh, let's open the door and get some fresh air. And it's not, like, a, a ritualistic thing. And not, or, like, a regular thing. It's just, like, it's stuffy in here. I'm going to open the door, you know, like that. But, yeah, I should. I should, uh, yeah, let's air it out. I should adopt Luften. 
Lusikate. That's not German. Um, I I should I should. Is it a daily thing? Is it a daily thing? Not I didn't. I, ritual is the wrong word. Like a like a. So routine, routine. Okay, daily. Even in winter, just for three to seven minutes. I'm going to do it. I'm going to loofed in right now in my office. Because I have, um, look at this hair. I have those uh, windows that do this. You know, these ones, the old, in my office. Lift it. Because uh, Matt doesn't like it when I open the doors because I think he believes that um, that bugs get in. And he's probably right. Some of them probably do sneak in. But I have a screen. And recently, in January, I weatherproofed all of our doors and windows and or like whatever all of our sliding doors so that bugs could no longer enter and the amount of spiders we have seen has gone down significantly i will say um uh so i think it helps that now there's like these little weatherproof thingies but he believes anytime he sees that there's like a little buggy in his office he's very sensitive to the buggies um that he goes, did you leave the door open today? And I probably did, because most days I I open the door a little bit. Because also I have a I have a tent out there. I have a tent out there for the cats. The cats can get some outside time. And when the cats are in the tent, I like to leave the door open so that I can hear them if they need me. And I usually will leave the dogs out there with them too. They're my livestock dogs, you know. Crickets are horrible, dude. This house... I had to go around with foam, foam insulation, whatever, like little, and I had to fill so many little cracks and crevasses where crickets were coming in. I have done so much for this house to weatherproof it and bug proof it. Those owners better be thankful. I have really made a difference. Yeah, Matt has the has the mosquito genes too. They don't really care about me as much. Yep. So I get it. But he has one of those um zapper lanterns in his office. They're not gonna take my deposit. They're not gonna take my deposit. They're not even gonna be able to see any of the stuff that I did. You know. Crickets are awful. They're so noisy. He does hate bugs. He hates skeeters because they, they bite him and then it really... He's like allergic, I think. Um, no, we're not moving. Uh, I would buy this house, but I don't have money. I don't have money to buy the house. There's no money for the house. Maybe one day. Maybe someday. Crickets outside are fine. Crickets inside are awful. Had to throw up, baby. Had to do throw up for no reason. Didn't do nothing. Didn't do nothing. Had a big throw up. Great. <laughs> you see your tail. You see your tail. Just go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Poopa. She good. She 
good. I have never lived anywhere with lots of cicadas, and then I visited Washington, D.C., not state, and it was cicada time, and it was... Uh, it was not... Oh, they were everywhere. They were on the floor. They are huge. And it's loud as hell. And I went to the freaking monuments. And there were so many cicadas. And I didn't like it. No, not in the house. Out in the trees. They were everywhere. And they were on the ground. And they were, some of them were dead on the ground. And they were so big. And, then, and some of them are crawling around on the ground. And then they're flying. And it's so loud. I didn't like it. It grossed me. But you know what? My ultimate gross is... Oh, banana slug. No. I hate slugs. I hate slugs. I hate them. I'm afraid. For no reason. Completely irrational. It's, it's not normal. I do have heart glasses. Thank you. I know, I know. I like snails. I like snails. I don't like slugs. And you know what I think it is? I think it's because um, so many times in my childhood, I would like go get something I left in the backyard and it was like dewy and moist or something and then I would pick it up and there were slugs on it and I didn't realize that there were slugs on it until I touched them by accident and it would freak me. You know? Here, Matthew. <gasps> Hi, come here. Come show everybody that you're okay. Oh, it's a boy. Come here. You want to you wanna take her bed? You can take her bed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yay. He's here. Hey, the boy, oh boy, the boy, oh boy, and he's a boy, 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 the boy, boy, boy. He's here, he's a boy, he's a boy, 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 he's a boy, boy, boy. So. Poo! Who's stinky? Who's stinky, which one of you? Stinking it. <laughs> okay, that's good. Sharing, sharing. <laughs> We're, sh we're sharing. And she is wagging. For no reason. Why is she wagging? For what? What is she wagging about? Look at that special black spot that they both have. Oh my god, I love them so much. That's good. He's so tired still from his trip. Yep. So I think, yeah, the slugs, they surprised me too many times in my childhood. And one time I was um, at the kitchen counter in my childhood home and there was a sliding glass door uh, right there. And one time it was in the nighttime and I was just at the kitchen counter and I looked and there was a slug on the door and it scared me a lot. It really freaked me out. And then I went to see Harry Potter and there's the part where Ron is throwing up all those slugs and it's like my two greatest fears in one. And I didn't like it. I was this. I don't care about the spiders. No throw up. Throw up in slugs. Throw up is my phobia. But I'm better. I'm getting better at it. I mean, not at it, at throwing up, at dealing with it. I, I like spiders. I'm not afraid of spiders, really. I catch them all the time when I put them outside. And today, I went in the backyard and I picked up poops. And I picked up a um, dandelion. And there was a little tiny spider on it. And I let him crawl around on my hand and he said, hello. And then I made a wish. 
Bugs don't really bother me that much except for cockroaches. Bugs in the ear. I mean, hey, it's a rational fear. I've seen so many videos of um, of uh, people having to go to the doctor and get bugs pulled out of their ears. No, don't tell me that. Why wouldn't they survive outside? I don't like centipedes. That's not scary. I don't like things that scurry. Change in temperature. Well, listen. This is LA. It's not that different. <laughs> but there is one spider. We have a sliding door at our bedroom. And don't get any funny ideas, okay? Because it is secure as hell. But there's one spider, okay? And he lives in between the glass door and the screen door. And he makes a web there. And I say to him, sir, please don't. And I clean it up. And it's sticky, sticky web. And this is just like a wolf spider, something like that. And I say, sir, please don't. And whenever I go to open the door and get rid of his web and try to remove him and put him somewhere that isn't attached to my home, he goes, boop, and he goes right into a freaking, there's a hole, a little like latch hole, but there's no door that would go into the latch to, to do, to hook into it. It's like... There's one that matches up to the actual door and then one that just has no door. And so he lives in the, he hides in the little latch hole in the door frame. And so I clean up his web and then he comes back out and he says, ha ha, here's another. It's very rude. So we're beefing right now. We do have some venomous ones. Oh, we do have, um, I did find a black widow in the garage once, and then I lost it. Um, and then we did also find a black widow in the barbecue once, and unfortunately we sprayed it with a hose. Um, uh, but we do have a false widow living in our fuse box. Yeah, there are brown recluses. I haven't seen one, knock on wood. But the uh, wolf spiders sort of can be, uh, you know, false alarms. You go, huh, and then it's just, they look really freaky. The, the, oh, I have a picture of the guy, of the guy who lives in the door. Do you want to see him? I take pictures of bugs sometimes. I think they're interesting. I like bugs. Oh, here he is. This is a spider. Spider warning. There he is. Okay. They just look scary. Amen. So he's he's pretty big. I mean, it looks bigger in the picture, but he's like, you know. But we have these everywhere. Those guys, it was a daily occurrence in our house until I weatherproofed all the doors and stuff. I think he's cute too. And they don't do anything. But I've found um I've found jumping spiders, lots of jumping spiders around, and I think they're so cute. They're so cute, the jumping spiders. They're little babies and they have little baby faces. I just got a notification that says first human bird flu case in Texas, so careful. Um I like a daddy long legs, no problem. I'll pick up a daddy long legs. I'll pick up a jumping spider. 
the wolf spiders they're a little freaky looking for me so i just put them in a jar and then i put a little paper under the jar and then i take them outside um uh and that's really it as far as bugs we did have um cockroaches when we first moved in and then they had an exterminator come i don't fuck around with cockroaches And I told, oh my god, did I tell you guys this? We had the home inspection. I think Matt said, don't say anything. <laughs> when we were, because he was streaming. And I came in, I was like, oh my god, that home inspector just said the most racist thing to me ever. And he was like, no, 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 don't say it. I'm going to say it now. Here I go. Um, he, I was, uh, whatever. He is asking me about bugs or something. And I said, um... I said there were a lot of cockroaches when we mo we first moved in, but they've, you know, it's also kind of cold right now. They're not whatever. And since then, I've weatherproofed the house. I don't think we'll see them as much. Um, and he said, oh, do you have any neighbors from a certain part of the world? And I said, huh? I didn't even know what he was asking me. It didn't even occur to me. He was like, you know. Sometimes people, certain people tend to bring cockroaches around. And I said, what part, what, what people? And he was like, oh, you know, like, uh, like south of the border. And I was like, no, I think most of our neighbors are, uh, I don't know, they're, that was like they're Persian, they're um, white, whatever. And he was like, okay, just had to check. And I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> Can you believe? Can you believe? I was shocked. Like what? What do you think, sir? What is the reasoning? Because you heard La Cucaracha one time and you just assumed that because there's a song in Spanish about a cockroach, that that must mean that they're in every household? Frickin' boomers, man. What the hell? Yeah, we do plan on playing it. I, that's what I assume is that's exactly the reasoning behind it. He's like, oh, yeah, 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 la cucaracha. <laughs> la cucaracha, la cucaracha, racist, annoying boomer man. So strange. So strange. Dude, it's crazy. It's it's crazy. I guess yeah, fighting stereotypes with stereotypes. But, you know, there's a <laughs> I'll allow it. I'm al I'm allowing that stereotype. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm cherry picking stereotypes and uh racist boomer man is one that I'm allowing. <laughs> okay? I'll, but also, you know what? I'm not saying all boomers anymore. I said that maybe one time today. <laughs> but that particular boomer. <laughs> like my mom is a boomer. She would never say that. She would never say that. So, not all boomers. Not all boomers. But many. <laughs> That's what I say. Although, a couple of my neighbors have really beautiful citrus trees, 
right uh, leaning over the fence to our yard. And I did steal some. <laughs> so. Mm, my mom is. Yeah, I guess she's one of the good ones. She has her moments. She has her boomer moments. <gasps> oh my god, I'm a lemon stealing whore. Oh my god. Is it is that true if they lean it's my right? Is that true? Is that is that is that the actual legal thing? Is that allowed? Also, I worry that like they have cameras or something. Okay. Okay. Cool. Google laws about lemons. Lemon party. Google. No. Listen, I'm a lovely neighbor, okay? In the sense that you will never hear from me. <laughs> Except I will take a lemon. <laughs> I will steal a lemon if it is hanging over onto my side of the fence. Plum. I will take fruit. I will take a fruit if it's in my yard space. I will take it. Okay. And if your kids throw something over into my yard, I will throw it back. I will toss it right back. No questions asked. I'm a great neighbor. You will never hear from me. Except for one time. One time he heard from me. Because the man was vacuuming <laughs> his backyard. You know, the turf. You know, the fake grass, the turf. You have to vacuum it sometimes. And it's really only something that you should have to do occasionally. And this man, every weekend, was vacuuming his, his turf, his fake grass. And we were trying to record an episode one day. And then right next to the... Because Matt's office is on their side. And every time we would get in there to record, we would just hear... <laughs> And so I went out and I said, hello, I'm so sorry. Um, we work with a lot of uh, audio recording for work and we're, uh, we need to record something. Can you please, is this going to be much longer? I said that, I said very nicely. Yep. Mmm, figs. But you know what I love about the lemon tree and the orange tree? Because they have a lemon tree and the vacuuming neighbor has one of those um, sumo tangerine trees. He said yes, of course. He's very nice. They're very nice. And they've come over a couple of times when they're, they're stupid little kids. Bless them. I love them. Their stupid little kids were playing with some sort of little uh, thingy, little chup chick figurine on the fence or like on their little playground. And it fell into our yard. And that's something I wouldn't have been able... It's not like a ball where I'm like, oh! So they had to come over and be like, I'm so sorry. There's a there's a thing back there behind the bush. Is there any way that you can go get it? And I said, yeah, of course. That's happened a couple times where they'll come over and be like, we dropped something over in your yard. And I say, it's mine now, idiot. No, I don't. But I did tease them one time, those little kids, because I was in a room and the windows were open and they were out there playing games, pretending to be Mario and Luigi. And I said, Mario. And they said, oh, who's there? And I was teasing them. 
Mario. It's me, Luigi. And they said, huh? I love teasing kids. I love kids. I just get them. We understand each other. Can you do it? Oh man, struggling. Oh, ha. hi. <laughs> Tell your mom that, um, you know what you should do? Gaslight your mom. <laughs> you should gaslight your mom and here's how you do it. Are you ready? I'm going to tell you, you buy an identical vacuum, <laughs> but it's broken, okay? And then after 10 p.m., you switch it with the broken one, and you say, Mom, don't you know that vacuums don't work after 10 p.m.? <laughs> they go to sleep. And then, come morning time, switch it out. I think that's a harmless little instance of gaslighting. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Henry? Is the vacuum's name Henry? It is April Fool's. It is April Fools. That is a precious fucking angel. Henry Hoover? Oi, you're in England. Oi, you're in England. We can prank him out, but I'm not good at it. I'm not good at it. I'm not good at pranking. I'm not good at lying. It makes me want to giggle. <laughs> he does hate Easter. What am I supposed to do? Oh, that is a rude prank. I like an innocent prank. I like a harmless prank that's just silly. Oh yeah, my fart straw. My fart straw. I do have, we do have a fart box. We do have a fart box. Somewhere. And by fart box, I don't mean it. it's a box. It's a little thing that you squeeze and it makes farts. It's not electric or anything. It's just a <laughs> Your wife and, I, and you started playing A Way Out. Oh, enjoy. That is so fun. You're planning your department's next team building, and I made them think today that it was mandatory karaoke. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, he, all the time, I guess, he and his sister used to prank their mom and, like, scare her. And I don't want to be scared. I tell him, I don't want, I don't want scared pranks, you know, but something funny, silly is fine. One time he did scare me really bad though. He wasn't even home. Um, I don't remember what it was exactly, like what the circumstances were exactly. Maybe he was home. I don't think so. He built a fake person out of laundry and sat it in the chair in our bedroom at the time. Um, it scared me so bad. I walked into the room, thought there was a man in the room.
but it was funny he also scares me often just by not i i like i always have a little earbud in and i'm listening to stuff while i'm milling about um and uh <laughs> he'll just like appear and then i turn and he's there and it scares me that happens all the time but I scare him too. I mean, you guys hear him when he has his late night boys night. Late night boys night. And all the lights are off because he's in a cave. And I show up in the hallway and he has his headphones on and I go, Hey! Or whatever, or I just appear. And he goes, Jeez, you scared me. I didn't even do anything. I didn't even do anything. I don't know what he wants me to do. How else am I supposed to announce that I'm arriving in your doorway? Hmm? Yeah, I give him the twirly finger. Let's go. That was one time. Twirly finger one time. <gasps> that would be funny. <gasps> Flick the lights on and off like Nosferatu. No, I don't have an Alexa. He doesn't want Alexa to listen to us. <laughs> But he's making really good friends with his, um, his AI co-pilot. He loves that thing. He loves that AI co-pilot. Oh, I know. I heard that sound. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> She's yeah. mad. Ooh. It's okay. It's okay. I don't know, it's called Copilot and it's on Windows. And it's helping him so much with all his troubleshooting and stuff. And now I am also using Chat GPT instead of Google. It's the best. It's so much better than Googling, you guys. Google is dead. Google is dead, I'm sorry. Sorry to say. <gasps> I do have a little speaker. I do have a little speaker. I could turn it on. And I could put it right outside of his door. I could sneak. And then what? A big fart? What makes chat GPT better than Google? Just, um, okay like this like ready okay i've been using it a lot for like perfume stuff okay if i go to google and i say perfumes like i'm just picking one hip hypnotic poison and i go to google and i do perfumes like hypnotic poison then it's like okay there's a Reddit thread. Any recommendations? Perfumes that smell similar. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I could look in one of those articles and scroll and, and see a bunch of uh, ads and things. Or I could go to chat GPT and I could say, what are some perfumes like hypnotic poison? Hypnotic poison by Dior is a legendary fragrance known for its mystery. Blah, 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 blah. It's saying a whole big thing. It is just going. Number one, Lancome, La Nuit Tresor. And he's giving me recommendations. Number two, Yves Saint Laurent, Black Opium. And I don't have to do anything. I don't have to go navigate or scroll or look or say, or say, decline cookies. And it doesn't matter because they're going to give me cookies anyways. He's going. He's giving me recommendations. Oh, Serge Lutens, Feminite du Bois. And then I stop him and I say, tell me more about the Serge Lutens one. And then he freaking goes. <laughs> Sounds boring. Yeah, I really like a challenge when I'm just trying to find an answer to something. That's what I like, <laughs> a challenge. <laughs> Life is challenging enough. I don't need any more challenges. Yep. 
It could be chatting complete shit. It could, but it's not. It's not. It could. It's not. He's still going. He's still telling me about Serge Lutens. He's still talking. Look at all this information I just got about this perfume. Look at that. Look at this. That is all for me saying, tell me more about Serge Lutens one. Frickin' going. Frickin' Oops. So much better. No, I can't check his sources, but guess what? I'm not using him to write a college essay. I'm asking about perfume. Okay. I don't know if I would rely on him to freaking, you know, do anything that's... really important but matt has been using copilot to help him uh troubleshoot on his computer a lot and it's been really helpful okay i will ask him how can i prank my husband he's thinking pranking your husband can be a fun way to add a little excitement or humor to your day as long as it's done in the spirit of fun and doesn't cross the line into discomfort or upset, that's really good advice. Here are a few lighthearted pranks you might consider. Designed to be harmless and hopefully end in both of you laughing. The classic toothpaste Oreo. Soap that won't lather. Cover a bar of soap with clear nail polish. We don't use bar soap. Autocorrect fun. If you have access to his phone and he has a good sense of humor... For example, every time I change the autocorrect, that's funny, but I, I don't know how to do that on an Android. <laughs> remote control hijinks. If you have a smartphone that can be used as a remote control for your TV or any smart device you uses frequently, change the channel volume or turn it off randomly when you're in another room. Fake bug scare, the unreachable call. If you're in the same house but in different rooms, call his phone. And when he answers, talk to him from another device or room, insisting you're not home and asking why he didn't pick up when you called. What? <laughs> but he's very nice, chat GPT. Um, I don't love plastic bottles. I, I get the freaking, um, you know, the one that's in the metal, the metal bottle, the refill, and then I put it in a thingy at pump. Oh, you know what I can do to prank him right now? I can prank him right now because of the Philips Hue lights. I can I can make the lights do things. <laughs> but he's going to immediately know it's me. <laughs> it's not really a prank as much as it is just like me bothering him. <laughs> but I can make them a party. I can make them a party in his office. Okay. What should we do? I'm looking at the Philips Hue scene gallery. I'm gonna do... I'm gonna do something fun. I'm gonna do freaking... Freaking vapor wave. Now you're going to play it. <laughs> he texted me. He said, why did my offense lights turn on? I'm going to say, I don't know. <laughs> uh, 
And now I'm going to say, he said, are you messing with me? I'm saying, no, question mark. Okay, that's enough. April Fool. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. I said April Fool. He said, LOL. Wow, good one. Got you. That's a good prank. <laughs> yes. I got him. He said, I like the colors you chose a lot. They're still on. <laughs> he left them on. <laughs> They're still going. Oh, good. Pleasant prank. Pleasant prank. I think I got a package of perfume. Should I go get it and open it? And smell it? And then go? Order unboxing. Okay, one second. One second. I didn't see it. <laughs> it said it's here. Hmm. Oh, I see. It was a package I sent. <laughs> Had arrived. Yeah, I do have, um... Freaking, what's it called? It's like a stamp. It's like a roller stamp that's supposed to, like, censor out label information. Yeah. Pranked. I got pranked. I got pranked by USPS. Can you believe? Pr freaking pranked. Although I did order something on Etsy and it never got here and it uh, all of a sudden I got a message that said rate your Etsy order and I said uh oh <laughs> I said uh oh I got pranked Well I think we're going to try to finish our video today so I should go help Matt Yeah that's a good idea razzle dazzle prank nice pranks but I should probably go try to get some stuff done before I have to take Booker back to the vet for his check his little blood check make sure his liver is actually for sure okay is that okay? I'm gonna help Matt. But I will let you guys know in Discord how his vet appointment goes, okay? That is a real April Fool's. That's April Fool's not only to you, but to me. I'm sure he'll be fine, but we gotta make sure. Gotta make sure for sure. But thank you guys for hanging out with me and just letting me derp around and chat and disassociate and... <laughs> talk about booker yeah you will see us wednesday maybe tomorrow if the video gets done maybe matt will want to stream um 
but yeah. As always, mm, be good. Mm, make good choices. And don't forget how great you are. Bye.